Hey guys, what's going on? Uh, Rick Harder here. Uh, I had a a lot of people ask me uh, to post up what my BIOS settings were for the E8400 at 4 gigahertz. So here we go. Looking at the uh, general screen here, advanced, chipset, or jumper pre, whatever. Um, here you go. You got your uh, AI overclock tuner set on manual, of course, because automatic is not good. Uh, CPU ratio setting, you always want to set that to the highest available because that will stress your north bridge less and stress your motherboard in general less because the lower it is, the higher frequency uh, for the FSB you're going to have to have to make up for the same clock speed you would if you had the CPU ratio higher. Anyway, that's why people who overclock buy higher multis on their CPUs because it can get a higher overclock and stress the board less. So say you got, you know, I mean, alright, I'm not going to go into it. If anybody wants to know, send me a question or something. Uh, I'll make another video. But anyway, here is what we got. Uh, FSD is 445. PCI Express frequency is at 101. I usually leave it at 101. I don't know why. I just see a few people that did it back whenever I learned. So I usually just set it there. The highest I would ever run it is 110. You can go to about 115, 120. I heard about 117 is the sweet spot for some uh, setup. But uh, it's not really good to run it that high. You're going to burn out your slot and or mess up your graphics card. So just a warning on that. But any RAM frequency here at 890 MHz is because if you like, if I go like this, I mean, I can go all the way up to... 1335, so that'd be nice, or 1186, if I had some, uh, Corsair Dominator modules, I could probably hit that speed, but, no, we gotta leave it at this, I mean, they're already 800 megahertz running at 890, which, for the Crucial Ballistics, uh, PC6400, CL4, 2.2, I mean, the, the SPD on mine are rated for 500 megahertz at, uh, CL5, 2.2 volts, so, I know they're good up until that, but I've only hit, uh, I think it was 990 or something like that, and I ran it for a while like that, but that was back in the, uh, the old Allendale phase, but now we're, uh, the Wolfdale here, you know, because we're cool, something like that. Anyway, sorry, I'm jabbering. Here you go, command rate, 2T, or on this motherboard, 2N. Don't worry about the timing information, half the time it's wrong. Set the first four. Uh, I got it at 555.18, which I'm not sure why I don't have it at 555.15, but nonetheless, anyway, all the rest are on auto. So let's move down here. Uh, DRAM static read control, we want that on disabled. Um, I haven't done any tests with it enabled or disabled, but uh, I used to leave it on enabled, or uh, what is it, auto maybe it is? Oh yeah, on auto I should say. But then I heard to, once you get your RAM overclocked or what like that, if you're not running in the SPD or, you know, it's not running your factory, it's better to disable it. So that's what we did. Transaction booster, I've always run it disabled. It seems to run better and more stable, yet I've seen some people who leave it on auto. And the relax level, I uh, never really messed with that. I think I tried one time to put it on one or two and it just failed to boot. So CPU voltage. For all you guys, that's not very high. That's just because I have a lot of V-Group, so... Sorry. 1.4625. Windows, it's 1.36. Under load, it's 1.352. I'm just good at spitting out specs, according to one person. But anyway, I don't know where I'm going with this video. I don't even know if I'm going to post this. Uh, basically, PLL voltage. At this, I could probably leave it on auto, but... I put it on 1.5, which is the lowest, which on the P5KE, I've heard that um, the lowest voltages that you set on the motherboard actually run higher than the second up from the lowest. It's hard to explain. If somebody really wants to know, I'll show the uh, site that I saw that from. Anyway, FSB termination, the lowest at 1.1, which uh, with my old 0503, it was 1.2, I think, or 1.3 was the lowest. So I get, well, I guess this is more geared toward the 45 nanometers as they use, I guess, less voltage to run normally. 
That's great, you know, 445 FSD on 1.1 termination, I got a while to go. Uh, DRAM voltage 2.2, north bridge voltage 1.4, I could probably even get it down to 1.25, but we're running at 1.4 now. Uh, south bridge 1.05. Uh, overclock charging, uh, that's on auto, I might put that on 0.70 because you have your options here of uh, right there so I haven't really messed with all that, like I said this process here was quite easy load line calibration enabled, that's something that helps the V droop so they say of course if your V droop is already tremendous, what's the difference of you know adding you know taking a little bit away Nonetheless, a newer BIOS will probably fix that. I haven't really looked into it yet, but I have the 0906, by the way. The first one for the 45 nanometers on the P5KE Wi-Fi edition. And uh, pretty much, I think all P5K Deluxe uh, and the other one, Professional, something like that. I don't know what the fuck it's called. Sorry. Anyways, uh, spread spectrums, all that disabled, of course. Uh, GTL reference on CPU and Northbridge. On auto, I need to start getting uh, some tweaks on those. Because I've heard that helps a lot with stability, especially now that I'm trying to go above 4 gigahertz. But I don't know, I've had it like this, um, well, since the last video I made. And I've been running it every day, and I have one problem. So, and all of you guys who were talking about, um, talking about um, how long to run a stability test, that is more, I think, a personal preference. Because I was taught, I don't know if you could say I was taught, but when I was on uh, Overclock.net when I first got into computers before I discovered YouTube and all you guys, um, I would basically go through and I, every time when I got a processor I'd read and if that's when I had the Pentium D805 and I would just read and read and I read in more places that to deem a system stable at least 12 hours on large FSTs on uh, either Prime 95 or Orthos and the person that told me I don't remember who it was that Prime 95 is not an actual stress test I'm not sure if that's what they were saying but that's how it came to me so that's why the last video I made at 4 gigahertz I ran it at uh, altogether 21 hours and 54 minutes on Orthos small FSTs uh, priority one just to show, hey, it's not going to fail no matter what I use. I mean, if, if it was going to fail, usually the only overclocks I've had that fail, fail within the first two hours. Usually if my processor does not fail in the first two or three hours, it will go for days. I wanted to let it run 24 hours, but I had to shut my computer off. I wanted to check out some stuff. and uh, Nonetheless, that's about it. Uh, I hope I didn't miss anything. Uh, thanks for watching, all you guys who watched this whole video. Sorry about the shaky camera work. I'm, I'm trying to videotape and think and talk and do all that at the same time. And I'm using the, uh, the other camera, not the, the webcam, because my computer's not on. Hey, I can actually... There's my rig right there. Did a few things that changed it around. I'm going to make a video of that in the next day or so. You guys can see a little bit of that fans and oh oh what's that oh 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 hard drives down there not in the cage oh we'll have to we'll have to we'll have to tell you guys about that later anyway I got some better wire management going on there and uh finally got both side panels on I mean I don't have the one on now as you can see but um they were on I just had it off and uh little fans there cool and stuff this one I went for a lot of two-sided tape because that just seemed to work very well. So we use a lot of two-sided tape holding these fans down. So next time I redo this, it's going to suck. I'm going to have to scrape all that off there. But All right, guys. Thanks a lot for watching. Talk to you later.